Team HTC Innovation. Okay, so I'm going to start uh, showing you what uh, our idea is with the holographic display. Of course, a holographic display is a very futuristic idea. Let's look a little bit closer uh, what we mean, uh, what, what the benefit is uh, would be of such an holographic display and what the need is, uh, w with, uh, which need would be satisfied with a holographic display. The important thing is that the display gets enla enla um, enlarged and that would make it possible to make a lot of works like with a laptop, more uh, things you can do on the small display from a smartphone. If that is possible to make uh, the display larger than uh, today where the smartphones are really fast, the processors of the smartphones and where um, the, the you have really fast internet connection, um, phones could really totally replace laptops. Yes, Simon, you're absolutely right. Uh, these devices would consume a lot of energy and really we have to think about new ways to recharge our phone when we are not at home. Our first solution is we want to recharge your phone while we are walking. Uh, this uh, energy will be created by the friction that occurs when you have your phone in your pocket and you're moving. And the second solution, the way easier solution for us in our eyes is to use the, un uh, the, um, un uh, the free power of the sun. This energy will be created by the solar cells on the back of the net and the only thing you would have to do is, is to place the phone under the sun. Okay, the easy payment function, uh, it's a, not a completely new idea because uh, there are some ways to pay something. For example, in Innsbruck you can pay uh, the bus ticket per phone, but I think this is really expendable. Um, it's not really a techno technological question, it's more a question of bargaining uh, contracts with um, banks and shops and uh, make it possible that they support uh, this system. We have to ensure that paying with your cell phone is really safe and how this can be ensured is again Alexander's part. Yes, as Simon said, when it comes to payment with a phone, we also have to talk about the security aspect of it. Uh, I know our phones should be protected by the PIN code, but in my opinion, a PIN code is not safe in every situation in life. Um, our solution is a fingerprint sensor. A fingerprint provides much more safety because every fingerprint from every person on the planet is unique and that ha he can hardly be copied. Think of you're buying a an, an car, a new car or a new PC, you can uh, choose your components yourself. So maybe it would be a good idea to make components of phones when, when you can say, for example, uh, I never, for example, me really, I never use my, my, my smartphone camera, so I wouldn't really need it, but I would like to have a better MP3 player with more battery because, I mean, my phone has an MP3 player, but the battery runs low. So maybe you could choose when you order your PC, uh, your smartphone in the internet, you can choose which components you want to have into your phone and which you don't really need and you, do, uh, and you don't want to have in your smartphone. Yeah, the futuristic ideas are maybe really futuristic, but, uh, I think only if we have the courage to step into the future, we can go forward. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. Uh, my question would be, uh, have you done any research when you began that project, seeing, let's say, which ki what kind of uh, functions or ideas or already are existing on the market? Uh, I've done some research, especially on the holographic display. I have seen that um, some special devices already um, could 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 uh, see. <laughs>